have any idea why I asked to see you? You don't? Well, let me just start by saying I am not a prude. But you two have got to stop groping each other in class. <laughs> now, I know what you're going through. It's hormones. I understand. You just follow them. I mean, I used to be full of them myself. But as you get older, they thin out a little bit. So, kids, when you get this sudden hormone surge, could you just think of something that will turn you off? Like my English class? You understand? Good. Excuse me. Hello. Oh, hi. Hi, Dr. Hendricks. Yes, I know, the, uh... Yes, the, the drama club is going to England, yes. What? Me? Chaperone? The drama club in England? I would love to. Yes, at 4 o'clock in your office. I'll be there. Thanks. So, kids. <laughs> did you get the gist of what I was saying? Definitely. Good. See you in class. Thanks, Mr. Lacey. Okay. See you later. chaperone or what? <laughs> John is filmed before a studio audience. John, a week in England. I'm green with envy. Yes, I'm very excited about this. And when the students leave to come home, I get to spend an entire weekend all by myself in this rustic little bed and breakfast in Wales. Oh, huh? sounds great, John. Oh, I'd love to find a little out-of-the-way place where I could spend a weekend curled up on an old brass bed covered with a goose-down quilt. <laughs> Hey, Red? <laughs> Let's say I know of a little place like that. What would it take to get you there with me? Chloroform. <laughs> All right. I'll check my medicine cabinet. Now, if you'll just zip up your mind, we can get on with the meeting. <clears throat> well, if it's all right with everyone, I have something I'd like to discuss. Certainly, Kate. What is it? Well, lately, it seems that when I talk to people, they don't seem to pay attention to what I'm saying. Like yesterday, I was... Hi, just... everybody. The day's high. Never mind. <laughs> I suppose you all have seen this dumb article in the Regal Park Register about the community center. No, we haven't, Denise. And mentions every group in a building except my Overeaters Anonymous group. How do they leave us out? Beats me. Usually, fat people are the hardest ones to miss. <laughs> <laughs> Chill out, Bones. You don't need me all over you. You have enough problems with that jacket. <laughs> It mentions smoke enders, self-defense. It even mentions you people three separate times. Really? That's right, Lewis. Lewis? <laughs> it says right here, the one-to-one -one club held every Friday night are led by Lewis Mercer. Let me see that. I'd like to get my name in there, too. Every Friday night for six months, I've been telling my husband, Orlando, that I go to OA meetings at the community center, keep up the 90 pounds I lost. Did I mention I lost 90 pounds? About 90 times. <laughs> anyway, he doesn't even believe there's an OA meeting. He's insanely jealous. He thinks I've been burning calories with another man. Well, hey, Denise, why don't you just bring Orlando to one of your overeaters meetings? How many times do I have to tell you people? My husband likes 
women with a lot of meat on their bones. No way am I gonna take them to that international house of beef. <laughs> Isn't this wonderful? They mentioned the one-to-one -one club three times. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Could we get back to what I was talking about? Oh, oh of oh, course yeah, oh, yeah. we can, well, Kate. <laughs> what was it you were talking about? <laughs> about how I have this feeling that people don't notice me. Mm. I'll tell you what works for me. Fluorescent sequins and a little paste. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Filbert, Mrs. Filbert, I'm not about to paste sequins on my clothes. Did I say clothes? <laughs> please, Mrs. Filbert, please. <laughs> Sorry, Kate. Uh, go ahead. Well, well, I guess I have this fear of becoming like my father's cousin, Sophie. She's a sweet lady, but nobody ever listened to a word she said. And lately, that seems to be... Hi. Can we help you? Happening to me. <laughs> Is this the one-to-one -one club? Yes, dear. And I'm the group leader, Louise Mercer. And you are? Do you really have to know my name? Oh, I like this chick. <laughs> Oh, excuse me a moment. I'll be right back, everyone. Ralph? <clears throat> You'll have to uh, forgive Ralphie. He hasn't really been himself the past 32 years. <laughs> The world is going on here. Louise. I'm sorry. Am I interrupting something? Well, actually, I was just talking about how sometimes people don't even know or care who I am. Does that ever happen to you? Oh, my God, it is you. I guess not. <laughs> Wait a minute. I know who you are. Huh? Brooke Collins. What? The TV actress. Whatever happened to you? <laughs> It wasn't just TV. I've done films, too. Oh, you sure did. Desperate Measures in 1973, Revenge of the Sandworms in 1974. Then, in 1977, you got your own TV series, Convent Cop. That's right. It's the match, the nun with the bed. to think that no one would recognize me. I thought if I found an out-of-the-way support group, I could keep the details of my private life from leaking out to the public. But now that you all know who I am, maybe I'd better just go. No, no, no. Yes, don't be silly. You have nothing to worry about. Yes, 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 that's right, that's right. Whatever is said in this room stays in this room. Right, everybody? Absolutely. You promise you won't reveal to anybody else that I was here? No, no, no. Well, I, I could use somebody to talk to. You see, I'm going through a very painful divorce. <gasps> you and David split up? Yes, after 12 years of marriage. Oh, <laughs> You're really being too hard on yourself. Yes, dear. Oft times in divorces, we blame ourselves for something we shouldn't. Now, why don't we see if we can get to the root of the matter? <sighs> well, I have this problem with... I can't. Really, I can't. Oh, no, no, no. Trust me. You'll feel a lot better if you just get it off your chest. Well, I have an addiction. You see, it all started when my series was canceled. I don't know if it was anger or a feeling of inadequacy, but I, even though I knew that I was ruining my marriage, I just couldn't stop. What is it you're addicted to, Brooke? Sex. <laughs> Problem. I get this uncontrollable urge 
to sleep with every man I meet. Uh, Miss Collins, <clears throat> Brooke. Yes? If I may, I think there's a very important question that needs to be asked at this point. What is that? Your place or mine? <laughs> Uh, this lady will have a sherry, and I'm gonna have a beer. Ah, uh, same. Oh, uh, the waiter. Uh, yeah. I would like a white wine spritzer, not too much seltzer, and if you have it, a slice of lemon. <laughs> there we are. Uh, I bought the last ten copies of the Rego Park Register for my family back in England. They're going to be so impressed. Well, you know, it's not every day you, uh, you mention in the paper. Right. The last member of our family who got their name in print was dear old eccentric Uncle Trevor. He was arrested for fondling a swan in Hyde Park. <laughs> Boy, if I could just get Brooke to come down to my toll booth, it would be the biggest thing to happen since we got that electronic slug detector. <laughs> No, 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 Ralph, 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 you, you can't tell anybody. Brooke wants to protect her anonymity. Oh, right. Yeah. Brooke, 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 Brooke. Is Brooke all we're going to talk about tonight? Oh, no, no, of course not. No, 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 sorry, Kate. <clears throat> Good, because as I was trying to explain earlier, I'm having this... Leave it! John, those jerks at the electric company turned off my lights just because I owe them 127 bucks. You got any ideas? Yeah, why don't you get some candles? Get serious, John. Where am I going to find the church open at this time of night? <laughs> oh, there you are, Brooke. Are you feeling better? Oh, she's fine. Oh, yes, I must be. I haven't cried in at least an hour. And I have you people to thank for it. I want to thank each and every one of you. Mm. <laughs> Would anyone mind taking a little time to listen to my problem? Yes, 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 of course, Kate. Thank you. Because as I was... Uh, excuse, excuse me. Uh, what about my drink? You order something? <laughs> Chipper? Oh, you bet I am. I just picked up my plane tickets. In ten days, I'll be walking down the same cobblestone streets that William Shakespeare walked. Whoa, talk about your major blood rush. John, I am so jealous. Well, uh, as I said, Louise, if there's anything I can bring back for you. Oh, no, John, I wouldn't dream of imposing. Okay. Get back here. Now, I've broken it down to perishables and non-perishables. Now, when you get to Mrs. Gray's apothecary, it's only in Chichester, which is about 90 miles outside London, sure to ask for Felicity. She's the only one who knows diddly about cucumber lotion. And if they're out of it there, you can go down the road yes, to Brighton. Louise, which is... Louise, listen, this, this is quite a list. I know. And, and, and you know, the, those customers people can be real pains. Oh, and how. I just hate when they go through your personal items. Yeah, and good luck finding one who'll give you a decent strip search. <laughs> well, I hope you're all happy now that you've completely ruined my life. Oh, Brooke, what's wrong? What's wrong? You get me to bear my soul, then you get me to go to that bar so that you can call that despicable tabloid and get them to sneak in a photographer. Brooke, what, what on earth are you talking about? This article in the National Intruder. Sex addict Brooke Collins and her new boy toy? <laughs> Could they do this? Yeah. It's one thing to find a three-headed camel, but to get a picture with all three faces smiling at once. <laughs> Ralph, Ralph, the story about John, may I? Oh. Oh, will you just listen to this garbage? Former TV star Brooke Collins is confessing her sex addiction to the 121 Club, a divorce group in Brigo Park. 
A reliable inside source reveals, after bed hopping her way through all of show business, Collins' latest bunk hunk is Drake Prep English teacher John Lacey. Drake Prep? They mentioned my school? Oh, that's great. Oh, this is disgusting. They mentioned everybody in the group except me. <laughs> It's always you quiet ones, isn't it? Yeah, 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 please, please. Denise, I got a problem. You've got a problem? I finally get Orlando to forget about our group not being mentioned in the last article, and now he sees this? Would it have killed you people to tell the intruder that Overeaters Anonymous meets right down the hall? <laughs> Denise, you couldn't possibly think that we had anything to do with that pack of lies. Oh, no. The whole community center's taking bets on which one of you is the reliable inside source. Personally, I think it's the pretty one with too much mascara. Oh. <laughs> well, I'll see ya. In her own delicate way, Denise raises a rather disturbing thought. One of us in this room must be the reliable inside source. Yes, Louise, yes, you got that right. And I would like to know who it is. How about who in this group would do a horrible thing like that? <laughs> what? Oh, come on! I am really wounded. <laughs> Give me one good reason why I would want to do a hatchet job on my pal John. It says in there that the intruder pays a thousand dollars for the lead on a story. Oh, yeah, like I need a thousand dollars. Whoa, 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 whoa! Before you condemn me, I think you ought to listen to this. Brooke Collins and her latest heartthrob, John Lacey, met at the One to One Club, a support group led by Louise, not Louis Mercer. What are you getting at? Well, I just think it's kind of interesting that a certain publicity hound got her name spelled correctly this time. Louise. Someone else who began to feel invisible when Brooke joined the group. Who was that? That was me, damn it! <laughs> well, looks like we have a confession. No, I meant it was me who felt invisible. And while we're pointing fingers, let's not forget little Miss Hominy Grits. <laughs> She's the unemployed writer. I wouldn't be surprised if she'd do anything to get a job at the intruder. Oh, she does have a point, Mary Beth. Yeah. Well, maybe the reliable inside source is a certain fan who was jealous of all the attention Brooke was giving to John and not to him. Yeah, own up, Tom. <laughs> and I thought all you people were my friends. How could one of you have done this? One of us? John, how do we know you didn't plant that story? Oh, come on, Kate. Why would I let them put my picture on the front page? So if you got caught, you could say, oh, come on. Why would I let them put my picture on the front page? <laughs> I wasn't born yesterday, you know. <laughs> Just stop for a moment. Now, one of you people is not telling the truth. And unless the guilty party steps forward and confesses right now, I won't have anything more to do with this group. Very well. I'll just pick up my coffee mug and be on my way. Now, John, don't let's be hasty. I agree with John. What's the sense of being part of a group where you can't even trust anybody? Really, Mary, but this is getting out of hand. I don't need this group either. Please, Kate. Same here. I'm with you, Red. Come on, let's go try and sort this thing out. <laughs> we'll put our heads together, and if that doesn't work, we'll put our bodies together. <laughs> Wait for me. What are you doing? I'm 
taking my picture. <laughs> That's yours? Okay, okay. So now you know. I got here early one night, the paints were out, and I made a picture. <laughs> I'm not accusing you of anything, Louise, but I don't want to see any headlines tomorrow. Grown man likes to finger paint. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Lacey. <laughs> All right, Brad, what is it? <laughs> you have made me so proud. Yes, well, I, I, I'm afraid I would have to disappoint you, Brad, because the fact of the matter is I hardly even know Brooke Collins. All right, John. Next, you'll be telling me they airbrushed the smiles on the three-headed camel. <laughs> Good morning, oh, John. Good morning, Dr. Sherman. And Master Hendricks, my, uh, it looks like you've lost some weight, sir. Well, actually, I've, uh, put on a few pounds. And may I say, in all the right places. <laughs> and, uh, what do you think of this article, sir? Extremely distasteful. My feelings, exactly. <laughs> Look, I know how these tabloids exaggerate. And if yeah. it were solely up to me, I'd still be sending you to England to chaperone the drama club. What? Wait a minute. What? Are you saying that I'm not going? I'm sorry, but too many parents have been complaining about that article. I know my mother was appalled. <laughs> Dr. Hendricks, I've been looking forward to that trip. John, let me be blunt. The situation is even worse than that. The school board is going to be asking for your dismissal unless you sign this statement promising that you won't be seeing this Collins woman again. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. First you take away my trip, and then they can tell me who I can socialize with? In a manner of speaking. Yeah, well, in a manner of speaking, I think this stinks. And you can tell the board that I don't appreciate them trying to push me around. And you can also tell them that John Lacey will see whomever he wants, whenever he wants. You know, John, you remind me of me in my youth. I used to take bold stands for my rights. I had morals. I had scruples. God, I was an ass. <laughs> what did I just do? I'm risking my job so that I can continue to see a woman I've never even gone out with. Wait, wait, wait a minute. What are you saying, John? I mean, there's nothing going on between you two? No, of course not. I don't even have her phone number. John, you have got guts. Standing up to Hendrix like that? Well, well, uh, that, that was uh, different. That was a, a matter of principle. Right. I mean, you took a stand. You told him, John Lacey will not be pushed around. And I think when this is all over, you're going to have earned the school board's respect for that. You really think so? Absolutely. Bet my life on it. By the way, John, if I'm wrong, could I have your office? <laughs> John, John, John. Looks like they're going to make you pay for your sins, buddy. Uh. Dr. Hendricks has called an emergency school board meeting for Monday night. Discuss your little fling with Brooke Collins. You gotta be kidding. I'm afraid not. Word has it they want to put your little fling in a sling. <laughs> oh, come on, this whole thing is ridiculous. To think that I can actually lose my job over a casual acquaintance with a woman, that means nothing to me. Hey, don't feel bad. I almost had to marry a few of those. <laughs> boy, oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, all this because I, I didn't want to sign that stupid statement saying that I would never see her again. Hey, look, John. Your job's on the line. Your back's against the wall. Yeah. It's fourth and long. Mm. What you need is a good old-fashioned pep talk. Oh, God, yeah. no. Hey, please. trust me. I'm a coach. Uh. I look, John. You gotta get out there, face Hendrick, look him square in the eye, and grovel. <laughs> I can't grovel. You know, I used to say that. Believe me, you'll get the hang of oh, Please. Hey, go get him, buddy. And John, remember, give up. Give up! Give up! Get out! All right!
give up. Uh, it's John Lacey. Is Dr. Hendricks in? Okay, well, uh, just tell him that I, um, will sign the statement. That he'll know. Yes. Mr. Lacey, we heard you're gonna stand up to the school board. We uh, just well, wanted you to know that we think what you're doing is really cool. Yeah, uh, yes, but, uh... This you, may you, sound kind of suck up, but, uh... You're a real hero to us. Yeah, a total inspiration. Uh -huh. I'm writing this paper for Miss Rice on the person I admire most in the 20th century. I was going to write about JFK, but now I'm gonna write about you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you picked me over John F. Kennedy? Me? Well, that's very flattering, but I'm... I'm sure it, uh... It, it, uh I really don't deserve that. JFK? <laughs> John! Yeah. I got your message. I brought the statement for you to sign. Oh, uh... uh you administrative types don't give up, do you? But, uh, my secretary's... For the last uh, time, I will not sign this. John, I really don't understand you. You have more loyalty to the Collins woman than you do to the school. Loyalty? You speak to me of loyalty? I'm the one that always says, ask not what Drake Prep can do for you, but what you can do for Drake Prep. Oh, that's good. Uh, Now, will you just tell me... Just as soon as everybody else gets here, Ralphie. Now, come on, relax oh. and wrap your chops around a crow. Relax! <laughs> I was in the middle of cleaning my aquarium. I have seven goldfish waiting for me in my toilet bowl. <laughs> Hi, Miss Gilbert. Hi, Tom. Hey, big key little pea. <laughs> Glad to see you. This better be good. Tom was giving me a perm. This is our night to play Goldilocks. What do you mean you didn't accuse me? You told everyone I was the likeliest suspect because I was so desperate for attention. Well, if you're going to read hostility into every little innocent thing I say, then go to hell. Ladies, ladies, nice to see you. Welcome back. These crawlers have a coffee. Hi, Mary Beth! I'm so glad we're finally going to get to the bottom of this. Friday night just seems so empty without the group. You mean you didn't have anything to do tonight either? No, nothing special. Now, could we get on with this? My date is waiting downstairs in the limo. Hey, is this great or what? The whole group's getting back together again, you know, uh, having a... Can the good cheer. You've dragged us all down here in the pouring rain, so stop dilly-dallying and get on with it. Yeah, Kirk, what if a burglar breaks into my apartment and has to go to the bathroom? <laughs> all right, Kirk, who was it? Who blabbed? Well, I, I wanted to wait until John got here. No, 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 no. Okay, 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 okay. But before I do... I want you all to be prepared to forgive and forget. I know I am. Kurt, for the last time, who was it? Someone very near and dear to all of us. <laughs> <sighs> Me. Thank you, Mary Beth. And that's a big step for someone as sleazy as Kirk. <laughs> All 
right, all right. We'll put it to a vote whether Kirk stays in the group or not. Good idea. Uh, I vote he stays. <laughs> Kirk, out in the hall. Yeah, this shouldn't take long. Okay, Red, but just remember, if you vote me out of the group, you're gonna miss that sexual tension between us. <laughs> I'll take a cold shower. So you admit that something does exist between <laughs> Okay, Kirk, I'm here. Now you better know what you're talking about, because I'm about to lose my job over this. Fired? Over that dumb little article? You got it. Now, look, I'm not a violent man, but when I get my hands on the jerk who did this, you know what I'm gonna do? What? I don't know, but there's a good chance it's gonna be a felony. Now, who did it? I find that very hard to believe. Okay, okay, John. I can't lie to you. It was... Mrs. Philpin. We need your vote. My vote? What vote? We're deciding whether or not to throw this lout out of the group. <laughs> She's been drinking. <laughs> He's the one who called the intruder. Whoa, 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 you, whoa, whoa, whoa. Helpless. You people believe what? me? <laughs> Talk about gullible. Self-serving. <laughs> no, 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 John. I made the whole thing up. I confessed just to get the whole group back together again. Oh. You misfits need each other. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. Yeah. You're a humanitarian. Exactly. <laughs> kind. Understanding, just like you. Mm. Hang him. <laughs> no, no, no. Wait a minute. What? You people are making a big mistake. And I considered you my friend. The only person friend. you ever think about is yourself. Well, I hope it was worth it to you, pal, because I never want to see you, speak to you, or hear from you again. Oh, yeah? Well, too bad for you. I know those people in there. They're my real friends. And right now, they're having second thoughts about kicking me out of the group. You wait and see. They're going to be begging me to come back. pleasant surprise. <gasps> Louise called and told me that Kirk is responsible for that dreadful article in The Intruder. Yeah, and I thought he was my friend. She also mentioned something about a school board hearing tonight. Yes, yes. It looks like I'm gonna get fired. Well, that's why I've come by. Huh. John, maybe I can help you. Why don't I show up at the hearing, and when you tell them that there's nothing going on between us, I'll back you up. Well, uh, Brooke, thank you very much, but I have to make a point here. That they have no right to meddle in my private life. Besides, I have to think of my students. I mean, they really look up to me. And if you showed up, it's just gonna look like I put you up to it and that uh, I'm trying to weasel out. And that would destroy the whole lacy JFK myth. Excuse me? Um, don't take this the wrong way, Brooke, but uh, you are my Bay of Pigs. Uh-huh. Well, if it's that important to you, why don't I show up and you can pretend you didn't know I was going to be there? I mean, lie? Well, we like to call it acting. Now then, I'll burst in wearing something stunning, yet conservative. I'll say something like, um, I demand to be heard. I can't just stand by and watch an innocent man be persecuted. And then you'll pretend to stop me. Um, no, 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 I can't do that. Oh, come no, on, no, John, no, no, please, no, try. No, 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 I'll I, say, um, uh, I can't stand by and watch an innocent man be persecuted. Uh, 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 uh Brooke, the... Truth needs no defense. This is a matter of, uh, principle. Good. Just, um, you know, loosen up and try to have a little fun with it. Brooke, the truth needs no defense. <laughs> this is a matter of principle. <laughs> this is perfect, really. Okay, okay. I'll meet you in the boardroom at 7. Okay. I'll be there. 
Who do you got in there? Oh, uh, Brooke Collins. <laughs> you wits. <laughs> Hello, Bernie. It worked. Tell the photographer to meet me in the boardroom at 7 o'clock. Oh, and did you hear from NBC about that movie of the week? Oh. Well, they'll call, believe me. This publicity stunt is going to bury the sister marriage image forever. The network is going to beg me to play that part. And well, they should. I was born to play a hooker with dyslexia. <laughs> you guys showed up for me. Okay? You really are very special. Now, just sit down. Now keep your mouth shut. May I have your attention? <clears throat> now, regarding the matter of John Lacey's recent emergence into the public eye and his questionable moral character... Excuse me. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. I just want to say that in all the time I've known this man, never once has he made a pass at me. <laughs> But please, uh, don't hold that against him. Mrs. Felbert, please, I'm begging you. I can't. I'm with Tom. Uh, Mr. Lacey, the other board members and myself would like to know if you're prepared to sign the statement. Uh, no, sir, I will not sign. Yeah. <laughs> Well, then I'm afraid you leave us no choice. Oh, wait, 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 wait. There's a principle involved here, not to mention my career. Now, I deserve a chance to be heard. <laughs> well, will this take very long? Maybe. <clears throat> now, um, I'd like to stall by, I uh, start off by, uh... <laughs> like to, um... St start off by, um... Well, I, I'd, like, I'd like to start, uh, with, um... A uh, little anecdote about our founding fathers. <laughs> uh, one night, Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Franklin were sitting at this pub. Well, they'd had a few. Please, please. This charade must stop. Oh, thank God. My name is Brooke Collins. And I demand to be heard. Why, wh what are you doing here? I cannot stand by and watch an innocent man be persecuted. Brooke, the truth needs no defense. This is a matter of principle. <laughs> yes, you're right, John. The truth must be heard. I am a sex addict, and I made love to this man. school, I must insist that you... Oh, headmaster? That... Oh, that could be worth a second cover story. Make you... sure you get my good side. Madam, I... Mm. <laughs> there you see, it was her. She's the one that gave the story to the National Intruder. Uh, yes, I am. <laughs> Photographer, you don't want to miss this. Well, you were certainly right about that Collins woman. Her behavior was absolutely shocking. Uh, thank you. In fact, I'm furious that I didn't have the opportunity to tell her off. You wouldn't happen to have her home number. No. Well, <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm glad that everything worked out and that you're still part of our little family here at Drake Prep. Hmm? What a hypocrite. I know, it's enough to make you sick. Dr. Hendricks, wait up, I'll carry your briefcase. <laughs> well, listen, I, uh... <laughs> I 
I'm glad this is all over. Hope you are. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I really want to say that I, I'm, I'm really sorry that I doubted your friendship. Well, I say let's promise never to mistrust each other again. Yeah, I let's, so. let's, let's do more than promise. Let's pinky swear. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? If that's what Ralph wants to do, let's have a group pinky swear. Yeah. <laughs> this is one thing I've never done in a group. <laughs> Uh, Kirk, it's John again. Look, for the thousandth time, I'm sorry. Kirk, if you're listening, would you please pick up the phone? Okay, call me right away after you get this message. I wake you? <laughs> you scared me half to death. What the hell are you doing here? Sorry, John. I wanted to leave you a list of people to contact in case I don't make it back. Huh. Your door was locked. I didn't want to disturb you. And what do you mean, in case you don't make it back? Well, John, when President Bush called and asked for a volunteer to go on a suicide mission, I... President Bush <laughs> called you? No, he's going to call Quail. <laughs> Anyway, I volunteered. I mean, why not? You know, I've been kicked out of the group, trashed by my best friend. Kirk, didn't you get any of my phone calls? Guy doesn't have a lot of time for phone calls, John, when he's preparing to help liberate a third world nation. <laughs> so hard to decide what guns to pack. I always take too many. Yeah. Kirk, um, listen, uh... Before you go on this suicide mission, I think you ought to know that we found out that it was Brooke Collins who gave that story to the National Intruder, not you. Is that right? Yes. So why did you tell everyone it was you? Be why? Be be why? <laughs> because, uh, you know, I just wanted to get the whole thing over with and get the group back together again. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I felt sorry for you guys. Oh, would you give it a rest, Kirk? You did it for yourself. For once in your life, why don't you just admit that you have feelings? That you need people. That you're vulnerable. That sometimes you react like a normal human being. Commit suicide. Commit suicide. This is Bird Dog. Hold that thought, John. I think this is for me. <laughs> Go ahead, Bird Dog. This is suicide. There's someone who'd like to speak to you. I'll patch him in. Kirkster, Barb and I just want to say how much we appreciate your heroism when you get back from this mission thing, which we pray you do. We'd like to have you up to Kennebunkport do a little fishing. Good luck there, Kirkster. Thank you, sir. Kirk out. <laughs> Well, John, I better be going. Yeah. Yeah, you got the uh, thing for. Well, so long. Yeah. Oh, Kirk. Yeah, John. <laughs> Listen to me. Before you, uh. I know you're late for the suicide mission, but I just wanted to say one thing. I just wanted to say that I'm, I'm really sorry for everything I said. And uh, we all want you back in the group. Everybody? Yeah. Everybody. You too? Yeah, me too. A lot? <laughs> a lot. Does that include a hug? 
<laughs> there, there. You missed me, didn't you? Right. Right. All right. So I'll see you Friday night at the group. Hey, don't be late. <laughs> oh, uh, Kirk, what about that mission for President Bush? Oh, yeah, like I owe him. <laughs> Where the hell was he when I was getting kicked out of the group? <laughs> He's good. <laughs> Next, John Denver, Aretha Franklin, and Reba McIntyre join the first family for Christmas in Washington. And Friday... It's the spirit of Christmas past when Sam leaps into the life of a personal valet, here to teach the real meaning of Christmas to a wealthy man. This is Scott Bakula. Leap into the holidays with me on Quantum Leap Friday.